Yay, let's get straight into it. Good evening, everybody. It is so good to see you all. Uh, we have got such an amazing call set for tonight. And thank you guys all for showing up. I know it's the long weekend, um, I think in both Australia and New Zealand today. So thank you guys for still showing up as you do every single week. Um, or if you're catching the recording, you know, massive love to you as well. Um, we've got a fabulous call lined up for you guys this evening and um, two of mine and Steve's really good friends, Sammy and Carl. And Carl's been called away to something extremely urgent, but we've got the amazing Sammy to run us through the call tonight. And um, we met you first time, Sammy, I don't know if you remember, um, but you came over to do an ICUD Auckland about three and a half years ago <laughs> and I remember your story and it was just so like this is what I wanted this is what I wanted to achieve and I was all in and I cannot wait for everyone on this call to, to hear that as well um, but then since then we've been on quite a few ice adobes together we've been over to Las Vegas and we've been out in Arizona hanging by the pool um, and it's just been so amazing to get to know this beautiful couple and I'm so excited for everyone who's taken the time out of that long weekend to jump on and really listen in. And Sammy, we've got lots and lots of, we've got predominantly female group, um, but we do have some epic men on here as well. And you, we've got a mixture here of mums as well, who are really keen to hear about how you've built this with having your babies. Um, yeah, so what I would love to do is just let you guys know a little bit. Sammy and Carl, have both, Sam, you, you'll share your story a little bit, but these guys have been building their business so deep and they flew over to Auckland. They just flew over here from Australia to be with us at New Year kickoff Auckland because their team in Hamilton decided to come up. So they just dropped their bits, came over um, and they're, they're so supportive of their team. It's seen them build up to a multiple six figure residual income up to four star golden circle and they've created five of their own executives. So they've got that duplication down pat. So um, these guys know what they're talking about. So Sam, I'd love to hand it over to you, babe. I don't need to do any more talking. These guys hear that enough from me every week. I'm going to hand it over to you. I'd love for you to share with everybody a bit about your story. Over to you. Awesome. Thank you so much, Karen and Steve, for having me on. And yeah, Carl can't be on tonight. Something urgent came up, so, so sorry. Um, I don't know if you can hear that ding, ding, the notifications. It's driving me nuts. I'm on Carl's laptop tonight and um, I don't know how to turn the Facebook notifications off. So apologies in advance <laughs> if you can hear that. Um, yeah, I am super excited to jump on and share a few, a few golden nuggets to help you guys along in your journey. Um, Carl and I absolutely love Corin and Steve and as... Um, I mentioned yet, well, three and a half years ago when we were in ICE Uni in Auckland. Yeah, that's trekking back. And we certainly had fun when we were <coughs> traveling away overseas as well, party uh, well, in the pool party in Arizona. So I guess that's the coolest thing about this company is that you build such amazing friendships with people who aren't even financially linked to you. And um, yeah, it's my pleasure to jump on and, and help you guys in whatever way I can. So just to share a little bit about me, um, Carl and I have actually, we, we've been with Isogenics now for five years in this month, five year anniversary, we just passed. And before that, um, I had a party planning background. So I've got three kids, I've got a 15 year old, uh, 12 and 11 year old. And I did everything I possibly could over the years to stay home and not have to go out and get a job and put them into care. Um, growing up, my mum and dad owned their own business and they were always working, like all the time. And I swore that that was not going to be the case. And Carl and I, um, you know, we decided from before we even had kids that that's what we wanted to do. And so, yeah, I tried my finger in a few different pies first before I got introduced to, um, to Isogenics. And um, so I was doing party planning for about three and a half years with a company. And Carl was working in corporate education, not a sales grown in his body, major introvert, five friends, didn't even exist on Facebook. And um, so if you kind of like see the way that his transition now five years on, it, it's, you know, it just goes to show that literally anybody can do this. 
And um, we were just your average family wanting more out of life. We were drowning in credit card debt, uh, struggling financially week to week. Carl reached the top of his pay scale, so he couldn't earn any more money. We had a look what our options were, which was him going back to university, getting um, his degree and uh, getting a higher paid job, which would have meant more time away from the family. Um, even looked at him going and becoming a tradie and um, taking like a major pay cut for about four years. But I was like, how on earth are we going to survive? And um, childcare in Australia, it's super expensive. So if I had put the kids into before school and after school care and one of them in full care, there was no point in me working um, a full-time job. So we literally, uh, we had our hands tied. And um, I guess the financial stress took its toll on our body, on my body. And I wasn't sleeping well at night. I was the heaviest that I'd been in years and just, just unhappy with, you know, our situation. Friends of ours introduced us to Isogenics, saw some phenomenal transformations. And I thought, I'm going to try this for myself. 30 day money back guarantee, right? So what did I have to lose? And I was dragged along six weeks later to my first event, which was Celebration um, 2014 in Brisbane. And no word of a lie, it was that event where my eyes were really, truly open. And I went home and I said to Carl, things are going to change. Like, I was, I didn't say it that calmly. I was super excited. Anybody who knows me knows I'm a passionate person. So there's a lot of passion in my voice and hyperactivity. And uh, I said, you know, we're, we're going to get out of debt. I'm going to, we're going to pay off the credit cards. We're going to travel the world. I'm going to retire you. And he was like, okay, calm down. And um, so I had to kind of prove to him first that, um, that this was the real deal. Like he already knew the products work. I ordered him a pack. Um, he didn't know he was doing Isogenics until he, the box arrived on our front door. Uh, so that's a whole nother story. He can fill you in on that another time. But um, yeah, as soon as I caught the vision, I got to work. I really got to work. I, I ran. Like, I mean, I... Um, instead of watching TV at night when the kids were in bed, I was on my phone. I was carrying my empty box with my, pres it was the president's pack back then, with the president's pack, empty canisters, going to my friend's house and showing them before and after photos on, um, on my iPad, um, showing them my transformation, adding them to my product support page. Like I really got to work. And um, I got to retire Carl from his corporate job eight months after we got started, which was super exciting. So obviously, that's not typical. Those results aren't typical, but anything is anything is uh, achievable when you really work. And and I'm going to get into that a little bit later. And so yeah, I we life has changed on us uh, for us on so many different levels. I mean, we're a full time family. We've been able to travel a lot of the world with our kids. Uh, we work very very hard in our business, but we also play hard as well. And um, where our passion now is just helping others be able to achieve the same so sorry that was longer than like a 60 second story but <laughs> I don't have Carl here keeping the time on me see <laughs> <laughs> oh no we're not about six, uh, 30 seconds 60 second stories on here we like to hear the depth I think it's just it just holds so much value I, you know we we do get the you know that we there are credentials that we get to share about you know the four star and the five star and that but it's the the person behind all of that, that that's where the connectivity is. That's where we actually get to really properly relate to each other and be like, wow, I was that, I felt that I experienced that. And I just love how you always share Sam. You're just so real and you've always been like that. And that's why Steve and I have loved you guys. Um, just always so real with your sharing about where you were, what you were looking for, what you were ready for. And yeah, real key one there that someone got you along, encouraged you along to an event. I mean, celebrations are pretty incredible um, event to go to in that, in that first six weeks. Um, and so many of the girls and guys on this call are going to celebration as well, whether they're in the UK or they're over here um, in ANZ. Um, and that's another whole experience for those that haven't been yet. But all of those, those four core events, they're just so, they're so life changing, so life changing. And everybody has been um, to a core event so far that's on here. So they'll have that relatability to what you were saying there. Absolutely. And something that I've really admired about how you've, um, how you've built in your business, how you've been able to you know, help five different people, couples get to executive, you know, you've really um, but always been really inspiring for me to see how much you 
work alongside people and how you set goals um, and how you help people move um, through and develop within this business. And that's something real key that I'm so excited for you to be bringing, bringing along tonight is that goal setting, task creating, and then actually getting there and making it happen. So um, I, I can just hand over the rest of this part to you. And if there's any, everyone's got their notepads and pens, there's anything you need from us, just, just let me know. But yeah, just go for it, Sam. Just share with us your skills because they are, they are red hot. <laughs> um, thank you. And also, as I'm sharing, the kids are just going to be, this is home-based business, okay? Like we have the kids everywhere. You'll probably have a dog barking in a minute. But anyway, as I'm going through this, um, feel free, um, Corinne, to stop me if you have any questions and you want me to elaborate on anything, okay? Um, so, okay, so goal setting is, is going to be like the theme of the call tonight and nothing, there's no better topic than goal setting in January, beginning of a brand new year. So I take this part very, very, very seriously. And, um, and you know, there's one thing that I, I put our success down to in building our business and that is not motivation, it's discipline because this business requires discipline. You don't have a boss saying to you, how many calls did you make today? How many follow-ups did you make? You might have an accountability partner to check in with you, right? You might have the support from your sponsor, but you don't have a boss. Like if you don't do the work, you're not gonna get paid. Your business isn't gonna grow. Motivation is literally just like that passing feeling. So, you know, we can go to an event, we can get fired up and excited and inspired and motivated, and we know that when we go home, sometimes that motivation, that feeling can go, right? But if you can learn discipline, and discipline needs to be practiced first, right? And even if you don't feel like you are a person who is good with discipline, then it doesn't matter. Like if, you, if, you're, if you're so connected to your why, like why you're building this business, you're going to do the work, okay? You're going to do the work. So... Setting goals comes down to discipline because what the formula that I use is a plan, do, review. And I learned that formula from the number one income earner uh, in Isogenics, which is Michael Klaus. So one thing that, um, one thing that Carl and I have always um, uh, set our goal for each month, and we have this up on our whiteboard actually, it's always been up on our whiteboard, is to go for four personal enrollments and five rank advancements for the month, okay? Because you have to have something to, to, to try and achieve. And four personal enrollments, five rank advancements, that's actually gonna, um, uh, that's the formula for playing in the bonus pools as well. So that's a really good goal to go for every month. Now, remember that your results also follow your actions. And it's usually about three months ahead. So we've got some, some new business builders on board with us right now. And um, a couple of them just started maybe two, two months ago. And they're putting in all the work, all the work. They're having all the conversations. You know, one of, one of the couples has spoken to like over 200 people. Um, and they started to get a little bit, dip, you know, lose a little bit of motivation, you know, pull on the, the heartstrings because not everybody was saying yes. But then when you understand what the numbers are, what the stats are, it's one in 10 people should join you. That's if you're a pretty crappy network marketer, okay? One in 10 people should join you. But when we remember that somebody needs to um, be spoken to or a touch point of five to 12 follow-ups, five to 12 exposures before they say yes, now have a think about how many conversations you need to be having. Don't expect to have 10 conversations and then get one enrollment out of those 10 conversations. It's one out of 10 will say yes, but you've got to have five to 12 contact points with that one person, if that makes sense to you. So really putting down what, the, what your goal is for the month, because I don't like to just base it on an income like, okay, I want to earn $5,000 a month. You have to actually really break down what that $5 a month actually looks like. So 
what I mean here, and this is where the plan comes in, okay? So this is planning out your goal. So if your goal for the month is say $5,000 for the month, you have to have a look at how much BV that $5,000 $5, converts to. And so there's a formula and Corin and, and, um, and Steve will probably go through this with you, but just, just to let you know what I do, it would be $5,000 and then you have to work out the BV. So this is residual income. We know that in New Zealand, $66 is 900 BV. So this is the kind of for, this is the kind of formula. When you actually put out there what your income goal is, you have to break it down right down to the point of how many packs need to be coming through your business center. Where's the BB coming from? You know, do you have a stacked up leg and you need to just focus on the one or is it both? So you have to really analyze your business center and see where the cycles are going to come from, where the business volume is going to come from. Hopefully this isn't too advanced, but you have to really learn and treat this as a business and know how you're going to be able to make your money. And if you don't really understand how the cycles work and how the BB works, you need to get so clear on that compensation plan because it's when you have a really clear understanding of the compensation plan that you know how possible this is and it makes it so much more achievable for you to be able to run for it. Um, so you, you, you set your income goal. So this is part of the planning, okay? So you set your income goal. You have to have a look at the BV that you need and then have a look at how many packs that is. And then you need to have a look, all right, how many people in my team do I need to work with to be able to achieve those packs? Do you have any bits, do you have product sharers or do you have business partners or do you just have a bunch of customers? If you just have a bunch of customers, do you think that it's gonna be easier for you to go out there and find new business partners to help bring in more of those packs, to help bring in more of the BV? So if you need, it, just say you, your goal is to get maybe 20 new customers in the next month, 20 new customers in your business center in the next month. Do you think that it's going to be more work for you going out there and finding 20 new customers or going out there and finding two people who are going to go and find 10 customers or eight customers each? See, there's no other business model out there like network marketing where you can leverage like this. No other business model where you can leverage like this. Imagine if you had three new business partners and they each go out and find 10 people each. You've only had to do the work to find three new business partners and they've gone and found 10 people. You, you, you tripled your business already for the month, if that makes sense. So when you have a look at, um, when, you're, when you're analyzing your goals for the month, yeah, absolutely, with leverage. When you're analyzing your goals for the month, sit down and plan out, all right, who can I follow up with? Who have I added to our product support page? Who have I sent a tool to? Who have I already had on, on a three-way call? Who have I spoken to, but I haven't actually sent them a tool or added them to our product support page? So jot those people down because they're gonna be the next people that you start contacting. Have a think about hosting sip and samples. When you have a goal in mind, you need to be getting in front of people. It's leverage. Would you rather spend your time having one-on-one -on -one conversations or one-on-one -on -one coffee catch-ups or would you rather get a room full of 10 people so that you can speak to them all at once? Who in your team can you be having, inviting to hold sip and samples? If you're one person building this business and you only have one person underneath you who is a business partner with you, then encourage them. If you're, you've got 10 people in your living room once a week or twice a week sharing the opportunity and your business partner once again, it's leverage and you've doubled the amount of conversations that are happening in your business. Um, what about a curiosity post? Why don't you go through your um, back office and have a look at the customers who either have stopped ordering and if they have stopped ordering, reach out and find out why. If it's got to do with price, revisit the conversation of, um, you, you know, are you open to me helping you get your products paid for? Um, with your current customers who haven't been keen on sharing yet, have that conversation with them. What have your results been? You know, when we celebrate people's results, you ask them, imagine if I didn't actually tell you about this. Imagine how many of your friends would love to hear about this and have the opportunity to get a transformation for themselves. Um, also have a think about, what, as I said before, the low-lying fruit. 
and that is the people in your business, the, the people who you've already spoken to. Have you followed up with those people you've had a conversation with, all of those prospects, have you followed up with them five to 12 times? And remember as well, this is a whole nother call I could do, but a follow-up doesn't have to be, are you ready to get started yet? Are you ready to get started yet? There's about five different, oops, I think I froze. There's about five different follow-up methods. You know, there's the indirect follow-up method where you're just kiss, kiss, hugging on their page or, you know, messaging them. How did your little one go at their first day of school? How are you feeling? You know, hope you weren't too anxious. That's a follow-up because you're showing up in their life and they're going to re-trigger. That's right. I didn't get back to them. So a follow-up doesn't always have to be you ready to get started. In fact, I totally encourage you not to do that because otherwise you're just going to be pestering people. So um, when you set your income goal as well, I advise you to do 12 months in advance. Okay, so have a think about in 12 months from now, how much you want to be earning a month. So if it is $5,000 a month, say, we, say you set the, the, your goal for $5,000 a month in 12 months time, you then have to work your way backwards. So in six months time, you need to be earning at least two and a half thousand dollars a month to ensure that you're on track. So if in six months time from now, you wanna be earning two and a half thousand dollars a month, then count back three months, how much do you need to be earning in three months from now? which would be at least $1,500 a month, okay? So it's really chunking your goals and making sure that you're making this, the, the progress to working towards the big goal at the end. Um, even with regards to rank advancements. So if, you've, if you have taken advantage right now of the crystal reset, then you have until June, I think it is, to hit, um, yeah, June to hit crystal executive. So then in three months from now, how many consultants do you need to have had? Well, hopefully you're going to be going for crystal director, right? Within the 90 days, because who wants to leave money on the table? And if you're coming to celebration, you do not want to be coming to the biggest event of the year and not having a bum on the seat in the leadership training with Eric Worry. Trust me, you do not want to miss out on that leadership training. If I were you guys, I would be doing everything possible, pulling out all the stops to ensure that you are not going to celebration any less than a crystal director. Um, and this is another thing that you can do is put a goal, a plan in place to hit your rank advancement um, goal. So to hit crystal director, really going through your back office and having a look, who are my active customers? Who are my pirates? So a pirate is one of your customers who's enrolled one person that has to be active. You know, what can I do to encourage them to enroll one more person? Can I get them to do a curiosity post? Can I get them to do a sip and sample? You know, can I get them to do the text a few template and, and message 10 friends to, to jump on and let them know that they're going to do a 30 day reset. So really get creative and figure out how you're going to turn six of your current customers into consultants so that you hit crystal director ready for celebration we have a whole team sorry yep go on Corinne. can i can i add into that sam um because we've just finalized our simple system our very duplicable system and the guys are really nutting into getting getting their hands and getting to grips with it and you've i just wanted to remind everybody that to go through your all your current cleansers, if you haven't been through the five impactful questions that are in that two-step system, that's where you get to revisit and open the doors again, those kind of questions. So just wanted to throw that bit in there of those, those um, creative questions to really get people opening up in the two-step. So take all of this and also take the two step and merge them together and make your own little baby from it because that's really where, you know, you're connected with your people, with your language. Putting, merging these two things together is really going to start to see things change. I love it, Sam. Keep going. It's so good. Awesome. <laughs> I hope I'm not jumping too all over the place as well. If I could like do like three hours on this, I really could because... Um, Carl and I actually took three hours out on New Year's Eve to sit down and do all of our goals for the next 18 months. Like this was a three hour exercise. So anyway, getting back into it. Um, yeah, Crystal Director, we have a whole, we've got about 10 people flying over from New Zealand for celebration. And the, the, the number one focus right now is 
getting their people paid so that they can get to Crystal Director. So number one focus, as soon as you jump on this call, I would go through your back office and go, right, who am I gonna turn into a consultant? And if you have customers that aren't gonna, that they're not interested in sharing, go out there and find new customers and help them share. You just keep on going, keep on going. We've got four weeks, you guys can do it. I'm, I'm serious, you so can do it. It all comes down to making that decision too, by the way. Okay, so the next part of the plan, so the next part, you've set your goals. Now what? Remember, we don't have a boss in network marketing, so accountability is key, having an accountability partner. Now, when Carl and I um, started growing our business, we had like no upline support. So we, we literally had to do everything on our own, figure it all out, fail forward. So you guys are super lucky because you have some incredible, incredible leaders on this call tonight. Okay, Corin and Steve are amazing. They've hit four star as well, multiple six figure income. And, um, you know, and I know that all they want for you guys is the success that they've been able to have as well. And what, what I really, really advise you to do is go out there and find an accountability partner. Now, I don't recommend having your sponsor as an accountability partner. I would recommend having a cross line or even going outside of your team and finding an accountability partner that does not have any financial link to you. That's what I think works best. Um, now, what we did, and this is how Carl and I were able to form some really amazing friendships within the company. We would go out and find someone who was the same rank with us and we would just become accountability partners. Every single week without a doubt, we set our goal with them and we checked in with them. Because if you know that you have an accountability partner, um, you know that you have to check in, you're not gonna get lazy, you're gonna be more disciplined and you're gonna do the work. Because otherwise, week after week, it's kind of like, oh yeah, nah, I didn't quite do that. You're right, it gets embarrassing. So, and find a motivated, accountability partner who is disciplined like you are. So that's the number one thing that I would say. Once you've set your goals, go out there and find an accountability partner. If you don't feel comfortable finding somebody, then even if you set your, one thing that my leaders do every single week is they send me via voice message. We have WhatsApp going with our group. They send me, um, not WhatsApp, Voxer. They send me via voice message their goals and then I get them to check in with me. They don't all check in at the end of the week because you know guilt kind of like plays in a little bit and embarrassment and things like that. But don't worry if you didn't do the work, still check in, still check in. So figure out some kind of accountability system that works for you. All right, so that's all part of the planning, okay? So you've set your goals, you know exactly what you need to do in order to be able to achieve them. You've got your accountability structure in place. And the next part is the do. Now, you know, we can like figure out our why until we cry and we can get super excited about setting our goals and writing them all over the house and having them on our phone screensaver and post-it notes all around the house. But you know what, guys? Like manifesting works to a degree, but you've got to get into action and you've got to be committed and you've got to do the do. And it's not hard work. The work's easy. You just got to do a lot of it. That's the hard part, the repetition. But that's how we get better, by repetition. Repetition helps you um, really like nurture those skills. So with regards to the do, I'm talking about what is your DMO? What is your daily method of operation? Do you actually know? Are you just turning on the computer and scrolling through Facebook? Are you doing one post on Facebook crossing your fingers and hoping that you're going to get like a flooding of inbox messages, which can work if you have nailed attraction marketing, which also takes a long time to, you know, uh, it takes a while to create that following for attraction marketing. You can be building that along with, you know, straight out um, connecting, building the relationships with people. So figure out what is your daily method of operation. Is it the three by three by three or five by five by five or 10 by 10 by 10? It's going to be different depending on what your goal is and what your circumstance is. If you want to earn an extra $200 a week, you don't need to be doing 10 by 10 by 10. But if you have got a big goal and a big vision and you want to be able to 
replace a part-time income or a full-time income or hit a financial home run, then you need to be doing more than three by three by three. I'm going to be upfront and honest with you. And Corinne said, I'm always upfront and honest. I'll always tell what it takes to be able to build a successful business and build a lot of debt. And you've got to increase those numbers. But have a think about on those days where the kids have just been, you know, completely at it, you're exhausted, or you've had a really, really long day at, at work, or you've worked a double shift, have a think about what your bare minimum commitment of your daily method of, of operation is going to be. Is it going to be one by one by one? So by the, I'm assuming that you guys all know what that is, but if not, I mean three new contacts, three um, invitations, three follow-ups. I, that's what it is. It's, you've got to connect, you need to invite and you need to follow up. So at the bare minimum, have a think about what you're going to do. Is it even going to be just a one post on social media or is it going to be one follow up? Do something, make a commitment. So the other thing um, that I would put in place, this is what Carl and I did. If we don't do our bare minimum, then what are we willing to sacrifice? So Carl's an absolute gym junkie. And if he isn't able to work out of the gym, he just goes crazy. So we put this thing in place and we, I said, all right, if you don't do your daily method of operation and working as a couple, that's a whole nother call, <laughs> a whole nother call. But, um, you know, is it that if you can't go to the gym? You know, what, what is it? Is it that I can't go get my nails done? Is it that you can't, what is it? Is it that you can't have that, half an hour wind down time at night before you go to bed to watch The Bachelor, whatever it is, whatever you do, um, you know, whatever your, your guilty pleasure is, have something as your own, like, is the word punishment, right? For, um, for you not actually following through for what you committed. So daily method of operation. And also, does your team know the daily method of operation. Does your, your new business partner know what they need to be doing every day? Do they have, do you have something that duplicates down? So have a think about that one. Okay, one second. Just sorry, just one second. I got a meatloaf in the oven. I just got to make sure it's not burning. <laughs> okay, so the, the last part is the review. So we planned. We do, so plan, do, and now we're up to review. And I would advise reviewing at least monthly. If you can't do weekly, do at least monthly. So have a look what your results were for the month. But you also have to have a look at what you did. You know, did you actually stick to your, your minimum every day? Did you stick to your daily method of operation? Did you hold yourself accountable? So whatever your accountability system is, did you stick to that? Um, and just have a think about what you could have done better. And that's what we're going to do better the next month. And I think the most important thing here, guys, when you're reviewing is really not beating yourself up and not getting yourself down. Um, some things in this business we really can't control. Like if enrollments is a goal and you didn't get that certain number of enrollments, you actually can't control that. I actually believe that you can't control that. There's been weeks like that we've run for a derby, ISA derby or something like that. And I've like spoken and followed up with everybody. And I'm like, you can't twist somebody's arm to sign up. But the one thing that you can control is your activity. That's the one thing that you can control is your activity. And I promise you that if you are consistent with that activity, it will pay off because seriously, the only way that you can ever fail in this business is to quit. We've been building our business for five years and we have seen it all. Like we have had the highest of highs and we have had the lowest of lows. I cannot tell you how many times I have wanted to quit this business because it gets tough. But then I remember why we decided to do this. And for all of those high moments that we've had, you're going to have people who drop out of your business. You're going to have people who are going to go to other companies and they're going to probably take some of your team members to other companies. There's going to be times where you have to rebuild your team. I didn't know that two years in, 
we had 10 people from one leg leave our business all together at the same time. I was pulling my hair out. I was like, what the heck? No one told me that this kind of thing happens. And that's why having that goal of enrolling four people a month, rank advancing five consistently, that is the, going to be the lifeline to your, to your business. Bringing new blood in consistently is the lifeline to your business. And it also shows your team that you're in the trenches doing the do with them. So that's pretty much what I, yeah, I think I got probably overwhelmed you a little bit, given you a lot. You've, I've seen all the pens going. But um, yeah, Corinne or Steve, did you guys want to ask me other questions or want me to elaborate on, on any of that? I didn't know how much time we had, so. <laughs> no, that, that was perfect. I love, I love the plan, do, review. And something that I know that I can get a whole lot better at is the reviewing monthly. Um, I tend to just review as I go, but that doesn't give me the overall picture. So that was a massive takeaway for me was that monthly reviewing and is it duplicating down the, the daily commitments? Yeah. Like, yes, we can all say we want to do five by five, five, three by three, 10 by 10, whatever. Um, and what I love is that everybody's gotten very present in the last few calls as to, um, with their goal, which of those, what combination is going to work for them with the goal that they're setting? Is it one by one? Is it two by two, three by three, five by five, etc.? cetera? Um, so just so beautiful, but just, just ensuring is that duplicating through? Does everybody know what those, what those things are? And I know everyone on this call does. So yeah, I didn't, that wasn't overwhelming at all, Sam. It was fantastic. Um, I would love to just open it up to, um, we, we've got quite an intimate call, which is awesome. I know a lot of people will be catching up on the recording. We've got about another 15 minutes or so. So did anybody on the call have a burning question from what Sam was sharing that they wanted to, um, wanted to ask in regards to that goal or something that Sam's just shared? I had a quick question just around clarification. I might have missed it at the beginning. Um, when, you meant, when you mentioned four enrollments and five rank advancements, does that include you rank advancing or is that purely your team rank advancing? Uh, either or, either or. Okay. I mean, I wouldn't, I don't set, um, I wouldn't set, once you hit like executive and one star and two star, I wouldn't be setting a goal to rank advance yourself every month. Well, I mean, you can if you want, but it's mainly for um, for my people. I want to create consultants. I want to create managers. I want to create directors and executives. So okay. we've actually um, created five personally enrolled executives, and we've had fifteen executives in our downline that that we've helped create that weren't personally enrolled to us. And um, we literally the structure that I told you about going through your back office and things like that, and identifying you know who's already enrolled one, who's keen to share how you know the, the step by step system of how we can get them to share um but yeah you want to build depth in your business and you want to help your people get paid so that five rank advancements if you're gunning for like director or manager or director or executive or one star two star absolutely put yourself in there but at least five rank advancements within your team so if you're enrolling for a month you know, and, and those five rank advancements, it's not your personally enrolled, it's anywhere in your downline. Because the beauty of a binary compensation plan is we get paid on every single level. And, the, and everyone in my downline, I treat them like they are my personally enrolled. I match energy for energy. If they're running, they have my time. So, you know, I, I can, I'll jump on a call with them and do goal setting and things like that. But if I don't see anything back from them, I won't give them my time. I will match energy for energy. People have to, and, and I've learned this, it's only from the experience that we've had, is that, um, yeah, so you could be 10 levels deep in my business and if you are running and you want the help, then I will run every single step of the way with you. Good question though, Laura. Um, I've got a question. Um, so you said um, that you like if if you've got people in your team who aren't obviously going to be sharers which there is going to be some that aren't sharers um find new ones so when you go out and find um new people in your team is that one of the first kind of questions that you ask them or is that something that you 
um, wait till they've started and ask if they're interested in sharing? Like, at what point do you kind of ask if they're going to share? Because I, I like how you said that, um, you know, you don't have to get 10 people to join, you get two and they join 10. And I, I don't know why that just, like, did something. So I just thought I'd ask. <laughs> Great question, and I love that sometimes, you know, we've got to hit, it's just hearing it a certain way until the penny drops. There's not one person that I have ever shared isogenics with that has not heard my financial story. So the way that I share my story with everybody that I get the opportunity is I share my financial struggle, my physical struggle, and what I've been able to achieve they can then decide for themselves which one they want to take. Because who am I to hold back and let them know that there's not a financial opportunity? So I know that, yeah, so, that, that, so that's where I know whether or not they're interested in the business or not. And some people say, well, I, because here's the thing, right? If you only offer the product and they're not interested, you can't, you've got nothing to fall back on. You can't try and share the business with them because if they're not even interested in the product, they're not going to be interested in the business. But if you share the business with them and they're not interested in that, you've got the product to fall back on. You know, are you at least interested in sharing, you know, in trying the products? So that's why every single time I share my story, it's my physical and my financial story in one and they can pick and choose what they will, what, you know, which solution they want to be able to, um, to use isogenics for if they, if they do say yes. And then throughout my whole, um, and I'm training on this at Celebration, so I'll go, I'll go more into detail about this, but my whole onboarding system when I get people started, throughout their first 30 days, especially if they're a customer only, I'm constantly dropping the seeds. I'm constantly inviting them. Are you, you know, are you open to um, ha having a couple of accountability partners join you? And if they are, you know, would you like me to help you get your products paid for? If they're day 10 and they're loving the products and I'm like, how would you like to be able to get your products for free next month? I'm consistently, non-pushy, consistently planting the seed. So yeah, I pretty much know in the beginning whether they're in this for the business or the product. Cool, thank you. And who loves it when they've got a little bit more clarity around where those new people are at, how they're receiving your subtle seed drops, right? It's so much nicer, isn't it? To have a little bit of clarity than thinking, well, how did that go? <laughs> or do they even know that there's the financial opportunity, you know? And obviously we always use the two step system where we're, we're always bringing it up, but that's, I love that Sam always, sharing your entire isogenic story then picking and choosing what parts that we think someone needs to hear because i was talking to steve about this this morning i really feel that the key topic that people aren't talking about in life yet are struggling with the most is income and, and our cost of living everything is so high and our salaries have never matched they've never gone up with it it's the biggest thing we're struggling with and the thing that we talk about the least and it's building it up, just building it up gradually. It's, a, it's even like just a simpler saying um, that isogenics have been helping you afford your products every month for the last however many months. Or I've been able to get my products at half price for the last four months. I can show you how you do that too. It's just whatever language feels really juicy to you. So re really great question, Donna. Really, really great. Really great. Thanks for asking that. Does anybody else have anything they want to ask? It's awesome questions. Yeah, Nikki, go for it, babe. Hi. Can you guys hear me? Yeah, yeah. Cool. So that was so awesome. I was scribbling away like a fiend. <laughs> um, so you mentioned five different types of follow-ups and you touched on a couple of them, but I'd love to hear like a little bit more about that, if that's okay. I've got this down in one of my documents. Give me one second. Okay, and I'm going to go through it now. Does anybody have another question while I am looking for this? Hang on a second. Sorry, guys. Hold on a sec. I do have a couple. Yeah, go for it. Um, uh, I don't think you did this at UIA this year. Do you know what your numbers are? 
that David Wood would normally go through? No, I don't. <laughs> I, I don't. Um, I, okay, I, I know that I enrol more than one in, so one in 10 people that I speak to, I enrol higher than that. I think I'm pretty much two in 10. Okay. Two out of 10 people I speak to. Because what I used to do back in the day, right, was I always, I have a, a hot prospect list, um, whiteboard on my um, wall. And so from time to time, I would take a picture, screenshot of all of my hot prospects. If I was about to like go and take the kids to sports practice or jump in the car and I would start following up with everyone for my hot prospect list. And I was scrolling through my phone the other day and I was like, oh my gosh, there's 30 people on that list and literally like 10 of them signed up, 12 of them signed up. But, and I kept on going through that. So I do have a higher than one out in 10, which only comes down to practice. We have, we have enrolled 185 people in five years, which actually is not a lot. That's actually not a lot. There's a lot of people who have been in for five years and have enrolled like 400 people. I think what we've done is we've really focused on building depth in our business. And as Corin said, Carl and I have traveled a lot. We invest a lot in our business. So we've been to New Zealand three times in the last three months. Carl went three months ago and he, had, he did like back-to-back -back sip and samples so once again, we match energy for energy. If we get someone who's somewhere overseas or even, um, you know, like in New Zealand or America or anywhere in Australia that, um, that we see running and they are showing up, we'll make the effort to go. It's a tax deduction and nothing beats belly to belly. And also they have their side of the commitment where they have to have meetings set up for us. So we, then I went back with Carl and we literally did seven days straight and we had two sip and samples or one sip and sample and one business meeting every single day. So that team now tripled. And then we decided to go back for the last week of the school holidays. Well, you know, we've got family there as well and to take them to NYKO. And the goal was to get them all to commit to come to celebration. So we've got 10 of them flying over. So that investment for us was worth it. And they're running. So we map, So I wouldn't go somewhere if somebody just said, yeah, I'm keen, I'm really interested, but they actually weren't producing any results or, or in action. So what was the question again? Off of those 185 yes. that you've enrolled, how big is your total downline? 7,200. Far out. Yeah, which is actually not even that many compared to some. And so, yeah, so 7,200. Um, Thank you. Yeah. So great questions. Thank you. But you know, the cool thing, Laura, is that this, this comp plan seriously is so awesome that you don't need to enroll a million people. You know, if you can get the right people in your business, you give them a great experience, even if they're customers. Like I have customers who have been ordering for the last almost five years. Some of those customers have never shared and they won't even answer any text messages but I notify them of everything. I'll send them out like um, a sample product of um, something new that gets released. That's why they stay with me. I get some customers that don't order for six months. They might even have their account going active, but because I looked after them, when they're ready to get started again, they come back to me. So looking after your customers, because this is another thing is some people um, have will only think, oh, I need a business builder, I need a business builder. No, you still need the BV coming in from your customers. You know, you still need those people ordering that one bottle of Ionics, that two tubs of shake a month. That all counts. Look after them. Stay in contact with them. So, um, but yeah, we, what we've done is that we have just tried to help everybody get paid. I think we have created about 40 odd consultants we've created about 50 maybe 50 consultants i need to do a recount on that um so yeah it's just about building that debt and that comes from casting the vision but then also remember some people come in and they want to do nothing and i also have some of those customers that have returned their products you know and i'll do the same thing with that customer that i did with the person who i turned into an executive so there's some things that we actually can't control. 
All right, let me just have a look for, I'm just on my business page, one second. Oh, okay, hang on. Sorry guys, it'll be worth it. Okay. So, um, first of all is the non-respondent. Okay, we've all had those. You know those crickets, the ones who are like seen. And can I just tell you that I have sent people seven messages and they've seen those seven messages and still signed up in my business because they weren't, are you ready yet? Are you ready yet? Are you ready yet? It wasn't, okay? So if they haven't responded maybe in about four days since you actually sent your last message or sent them the tool, okay? Your goal for the non-respondent follow-up, your goal is to get them to respond to your message. So it's not, hey, have you watched the video or what do you think of the page? You're gonna send them a message that's gonna get a response like, I um, just want to apologize for being so busy. I haven't had a chance to follow up. You know, how are you going? Or, hey, how did, like I said, how did your daughter go in her first day of prep today? Hope you weren't, you know, hope you, you know, just something like that. Or um, just saw that your son won their rugby grand final. Or, um, hey, I saw you were in Bali. Go and check out this place. Or, you know, how was it? So the idea is to get your prospect to actually respond. And I call that a non-respondent. That's the non-respondent follow-up. So the, the goal is to get them just to respond to that message. Then there's another follow-up type, which is we call a deflection. Okay, so this is when you've already followed up um, and they've seen your messages and they've responded at least once. So I'm sure that you guys have had that. So I would say something like, hey, I know what, um, what I'm doing may not be a good fit for you, but do you know anyone who might want to lose some weight or who might have some health goals for the new year um, or might want to earn a part-time income from home? Whatever you've spoken to them about. So remember, a deflection follow-up is when they've responded to at least one message. So you can go back in with, um, and that's, you, you're being straight up as well. And you know what? Sometimes you need to be straight up. Otherwise you can be beating around the bush, beating around the bush, and it's gonna be a long process to build. The other one is an update deflection, okay? This is when you're updating them about something. So maybe um, they poured their heart out to you when you went through, um, you know, why they wanted to lose weight and, and things like that, and they didn't end up getting started with you, and you just had someone post on your um, product support page, a really phenomenal transformation with a story and you say hey you know hope you're awesome I thought of you when I saw this story so that's like an update an update deflection follow-up then there's the indirect one as well so when they haven't responded to any of your messages uh, they have said no previously and um, pretty much yeah just give it um, hang on just letting them know you know I'm not sure if the timing's right for you um, but just wonder, yeah, wondering how the kids are. So it's just sending something that's not directly related to the first conversation that you initially had. And then you've got the direct follow-up as well. Hey, I noticed that you'd seen my last few messages, so I'm assuming that you're either super busy, no longer interested, or maybe I've offended you, which is not my intention. So I'll give you an example of that. Two weeks ago, I sent a message to my friend that I spoke to about isogenics about two years ago. And um, I told her, you know, I thought of her because, you know, it's a new year and she always keeps popping up in my mind and my team's expanding and I, she's someone I admire. I know how super motivated she is and just wanted to check if the timing's right. She hadn't seen my message. So I actually messaged her two days ago just to say exactly that. Hey, I hope I didn't offend you. And she messaged me back instantly and said, I've been crazy busy working over the school holidays, trying to, you know, juggle the kids and work. So, you know, you ju just to keep that relationship um, alive as well. So I can send these to you as well. Anyway, um, Corin, that you can um, hand out to your team. Uh, you know me, I don't mind sharing. So yeah, it's important to know that there are different follow-up methods because you the fortune is in the follow-up and you've got to nail the follow-up process. So yeah, I'm happy to do that. So good question. <laughs> Such a good question. Great one. Nice work, Donna. Thank you. And thanks, Sam. I would love that up in the page. 
it's so great to just be thinking outside of just the follow-up of, are you ready yet? Are you ready yet? And even just as you were reading those scenarios, people are popping up in my head as, as to who to follow up with next. It's going back to that follow-up book. And I think it was Alan Hilsinger just like drilled it in, the fortunes in the follow-up. It was just the constant, right? So, yeah. so fantastic. And that Have I Offended You one, I think everybody's mastering that now because it is just so, nobody, of course you haven't offended Everybody anybody. responds. Everybody yeah response to that message literally nobody wants to offend anyone no unless you actually have offended someone then they still yeah. don't reply and then you're like <laughs> Put you at the back of the follow-up book yes. yeah. Yeah. <laughs> that was absolutely fantastic so so great thank you so much that was just brilliant we're, we're coming up to the end of the hour um if anyone's got one more burning question we've got room for it I cannot wait to hear you speaking at Celebration, Sam. Yeah, I'm excited. I'm excited. I can't wait. I haven't presented at Celebration before, so I'm like on a strict as 30 days. <laughs> <laughs> cleansing and everything. Double Cleanse cleansing. Mind. I'm excited. I'm super excited. I can't wait. Can't wait. Oh, how fab. Oh, yeah. I can't wait what day is your, is your piece for Celebration? Sunday, uh, Sunday, Sunday. I'm, I'm on. Fantastic. Yeah. We'll, 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 oh, we'll all be cheering for you. That's for sure. Big time. It's been an absolute pleasure to have you on. It's been such a gift. Thank you for saying yes when I reached out and asked you. I knew you'd bring so, so much, and I can just see so many light bulbs going off for people and those pens scribbling down. And like you said, sometimes you've just got to. Sometimes you've got to hear it from a totally different way for us to pick up on different things. It's just so powerful. So, so powerful. We appreciate you so much. Thank you. Thanks for jumping on tonight. Um, and girls, I'll get that posted up in our group page. That those, all those follow-ups, that is just so awesome. I cannot wait to use them and read them through. And maybe we can jump in each other's business pages anyway and see if there's um, anything else we can add and share that's so awesome and amazing numbers too Whew. you 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 work really hard you work, really do work hard have 20 executives in your downline and and i know that you and carl have built this from the very very beginning on that inside 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 leg and it just goes to show that it is just that commitment that dedication that when that momentum wears off it's just action and it's everything you do behind behind closed doors as it's where the business really grows and and that's what we're all here for right is to transform our lives and our family lives and um and to really really yeah really ace it and i love i love this tribe always showing up you guys are doing amazing work so sam thank you so much for your time thank you so much i'm going to end the recording there. thank you guys for having me on thanks again for inviting me and you know what my last words guys just go for it want it so bad don't let anyone or anything deter you and just go for it yes it's hard work but there is nothing more rewarding there there is nothing that beats network marketing i'm not kidding the lifestyle that it can provide for you the friendships you know yes it can be hard at times but it's just so so super rewarding so Thank you so much, guys. See you guys at Celebration. Thanks again, Karen. See you, Steve. Thanks, Sam. See you, everyone.